So the next step is the tunic. What we have left is the tunic, maybe a little detail to the knees, and then it's the face and the hair and the hat. So to make the tunic, um, we're going to get into our this beautiful new core that we have. We call it lapis. Be aware you have all these kinds of little bits of wool, so just set those aside. And then, what's the matter? There is a fly. <laughs> fly bugging you? It's not good. Like a hundred times landing on me. Ah, oh, so pretty. It's not pretty. And then we gave you our peacock bat. So we want to first start. The bat is. Um, kind of like roving except it's it was wider so this is a piece of it pulled off and that's what you're going to do you're going to pull off uh, about a sort of half inch strip and then um, get yourself two um, six to eight inch pieces of that so about like that and then we want to do that wrap on the shoulders again that we did with the gray core. And this will put some blue on there so that um, when we put our sleeve and belly tacos on, this will be there to blend for them to blend into. It's biting me. <laughs> it's weird. Mind if the camera falls over. So how do gnomes that want to date look for an ideal partner? Um, I don't know how. They rely on their instincts and fear of gnomes. <laughs> that is such a stretch. <laughs> when I said there were no jokes, I was not kidding. <laughs> but gnome is so easy to make a pun of. It's a fair gnome. A fair gnome. <laughs> a fair gnome. <laughs> that is a weird word. What is the word? Pheromones. Pheromone. <laughs> Moan. <laughs> That's a weird word mm -hmm. too. Now using the core and the top coat, we need to make three tacos. Two for the arms and one for the belly. Doesn't matter which ones you do first. Um, let's do let's do the belly <laughs> first. <laughs> Okay, the belly, it has to go all the way around. So it needs to be like a good six inches wide to fit all the way around. And one way you can figure that out is you can take a piece of core wool, put it around the base, you know, see how long that needs to be. All right, so good guess, a little bit more than six inches. And then this will be your noodle. A piece of this will be your noodle. So that's you know you're making it wide enough. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> We're falling apart. And then you want to, this is really fuzzy. You want to, as much as you can. Now it needs to be about four inches, three inches long, because we want it to hang just past the belly, but not like down to his knees or anything. So. About, about three or four inches long. I apologize for being so distracting. <laughs> so three, wow, that little bugger is really bugging you. So three pieces of this core is gonna make it about the right width. 
and you know it's pretty fuzzy like I said so make sure you work it out so that it's nice and blended you don't want you know chunks or anything like that I'm gonna give it a little stretch I think the mail might be here it's exciting you a long time to make that tunic. Days. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we have the core wool spread out to six inches, about four inches by six inches, we're going to take the top coat. And I like to kind of grab the tips and pull and that gives you nice even thin layers. It's like putting a glaze of color on top. I thought you were going to go with like a food reference. Yeah. Well, glaze on donuts is always exciting. <laughs> then just give it a couple of stabs to get stuff stuck together, but we need to flip it over because we want the pretty color on the bottom. And then you're going to put your noodle across the bottom about a half an inch up. Stab that down. If you want, you can use the Zuli tool to get a nice sharp fold. Yeah, well, so with the pre-felt, you would just cut the piece of pre-felt and, um, and then add this layer of top coat to it and it just felts right together. You can use the uh, regular felting needles, like a punch tool and yep. pen tool? Yep. And then I'm going to felt the other way. Really mostly concentrating on the bottom edge because the top edge is going to get felted into the gnome's body. So I really want this part that hangs to be really well felted. A little bit more. this on I'm going to go ahead and make the sleeves as well. So they're made the same way just with a one piece of any tips on figuring out how long the blue I think like stick their arm up yeah so like three inches yeah it's going to get folded over as well. So that piece on the left is wimpy. It was a little wimpy, so I made it the same as the other one. Ruh -ruh. And then... Ooh! I'm going to sneeze. Sorry. I wish I had a gnome sneezing pun. I'm just not that quick on my feet. Wow, usually I sneeze three times. That was the... Well, oh, we've got time. See. <laughs> that was we were your all camera. scared. That was your camera sneeze. 
I think I'll put a thin little noodle in this. I'm gonna make it out of top coat just to keep it on the thin side and the right color. My center to my okay, my workspace. Yep. Catching your head a little bit, but okay. I think everyone enjoys the top of your hair. <laughs> I wish our um, friends and viewers could tell me jokes while I felt. <laughs> they might possibly have better ones than me. Maybe they are. Maybe they're talking to us. Telling you, gnome humor is a dangerous place to go. All right, come on, give us one. You can't keep talking about it. How many gnomes does it take to paint a wall? I don't know how many. Depends on how hard you throw them. <laughs> it's terrible. That's terrible. It is. I figured you'd find that one particularly disturbing since <laughs> gnomes are real. <laughs> Okay, now this is going to get exciting. Um, before you put the sleeves on, it's best to go ahead and fold them around and cuff the bottom. So just make it a circle and tack it together and get this closed because you can't do that once it's on there. And you can even belt this part to close it and it'll open back up. Just stick your finger in there and it'll open back up. But you can make that nice and closed up. And then let's see if his big old mitts will fit through here. You have to be like a little kid and make him make his hands small. <laughs> Oh, getting mittens on the Oh little my kids. gosh, the snow days. Oh my <laughs> gosh. When it took like an hour to get them out the door and then they came back in in five minutes. Somehow completely soaked. <laughs> and having to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. and starving. Then I can decide where I want it, how long I want the sleeves. And just stab the fringe into the arm. I'm going to make a fancy little double taco shoulder piece that completes this top of the arm and also makes it look like he's actually got a little seam in his clothing. So if this is a little funky looking, don't worry about it yet. I'll tell you when to worry about it. <laughs> so bossy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Feeling bossy today. Seems so wrong to poke into it. I know. You could use your Zoli tool to get back in there also. Right. Good idea. I feel like I made this one wider for some reason, but... This is exciting. I like making the little clothes. I really had fun dressing um, Little Red.
Interestingly, I don't like dressing the fiber fairy. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, maybe Little because Red was dressed once and done. Yes, uh, maybe because the fiber fairy needs so much. I like dressing the fiber fairy. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't like making the clothes. I like when people make the clothes for us. Yes, me too. We just have a wardrobe. We should do another one of those. Yeah. Alright, now, this is exciting, we can put this on. Hopefully, I made it big enough. Just give it a little stretch. Okay, same thing, I'd like to close this before I put it on. Really? So, mm hmm Because there's just no other way to get this bottom you gotta shove them in seam. there? Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise you can't you can't felt this. So now we have to point his toes. Try to get this over his great big button belly. So you left the top a little yeah, undone. You just got that bottom. Yeah. And then I like to put it where you can just see his butt peeking out. So not too long. All right, he's good and fat. Cause he's gonna need a face face soon. He's getting a little freaky. <laughs> so helpful. He's Milo. grown into everything but his face. <laughs> I, just in case you didn't notice, he needs a face still. I thought I'd help you out. Just in case you didn't notice, I've been putting it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to get everything else done. That's next. We'll do our little shoulder pieces and then we'll... About the pants. You gonna finish the pants? Yeah, I'm gonna finish everything. <laughs> I am going to create this gnome in its entirety yeah, that's good. for the people. I wonder if there's gnome proverbs. Uh, <laughs> Proverbs. I met someone named Proverbs once. Really? Yes. Were they wise? Um, I didn't get to know him that that's, well. That's tough. That's a tough name to live up to. He Those was are... very handsome. He was wow, a model. that helps. He had dark skin and green eyes. He's beautiful. I think he was a rapper, too. Alrighty. Alright, little shoulder poofs. Let's see, do we just want to use top coat? Sure. Well, we'll put a little bit of. So just grab the end and pull like a two by one inch piece. Vertical, like vertically. And then just stick a tiny bit of core wool in there, just in the center. Real thin little smidge. And um, I don't think we need a double taco. We'll just make a regular taco. So just stab across. I'm going almost to the center. 
Yeah, I guess basically the center. Tiny bit above center. Yeah, and then fold that down. Okay, my mind is blown. I said there's a proverb. Proverb is a synonym of gnome. What? I'm not kidding. What? I'm not trusting the internet right now. Proverbs are phrases expressing a basic truth can, that can be applied to common situations. A gnome is a brief reflection or a maxim, a pithy saying. A gnome, G-N-O-M-E. That's what it says. Uh, so now we go with the gnome. I'm going to have to do gnome. more research on this. I think before we put these on, if your piece needs... So they're going to go like this, so that the seam is at the shoulder and then the fringe comes down the arm. If your piece needs a little top coat in here, go ahead and do that first. So I'm just going to lay top coat on it. I'm on it. And then let it come over the back. What? So the second meaning. The first and true meaning, one of a species of diminutive being. <laughs> and the second okay. meaning. The second meaning of no, according to dictionary.com. Okay. A short, pithy expression of a general truth, an aphorism. <sighs> I'm gonna start nomen all the God. time. Who knew? We're gonna say we're gonna say nomen as lingo like being wise for a pithy <laughs> all right i have a nomen you have a nomen i have a nomen I, what what do you know uh, well it came from partly from my yoga instructor who's very smart and he says struggle is akin to compost and what i took that to mean was you're breaking it down creating from crap. Yes. <laughs> energy, new energy that brings new beginnings and new directions and new life. That's what struggle is. All right, that's Nomen. You Nomen. I'm Nomen, man. Every day. I'm Nomen it. I got proverbs. <laughs> you got gnomes. It's gonna take a while for me to really buy into that. That's one of those things that would be on like the New York Times crossword puzzle. Right, like who knows that? We do now. We and everyone else out there. You're welcome, people. <laughs> there were probably people out there when I said known proverbs. They're like, duh. Right. I know him is a proverb. <laughs> Where you been? Not on dictionary.com. So if you're struggling, don't worry. It's just compost. <laughs> Take that crap and turn it into yeah. something beautiful. Turn it people. into black gold. <laughs> we compost. We have so much. We just compost and it just keeps composting. I don't know what happens to it. We never use it. It just. <laughs> it's good. Give your own little landfill. Little gnome. Do you want a face? Earth, please. <laughs> Alright, I'm on it. I'm doing it. Hello. We should remind people to um, open a new tab and do the oh. stretching video. Yes, for sure. <laughs> this workspace is actually a tiny bit high for me because I put this work surface on top of an already high work surface. <laughs> okay, we're going to make a face now. I don't worry too much about this neck line because is you're never going to see it. His beard and hair cover everything. 
Um, I need to build the head up with core a little bit more before I start making shapes. So I'm going to take a six inch piece and split it in half. Stretch it out. I think the last thing that we did on the head was we went around this way and now we want to go around this way. So I'm going to start by going around the neck just because he needs a little bit more there. And then I'm going to turn the corner here and do this. This is your toothache wrap. Yes. And then let's take this and go around one more time. This might be a little bit much. We'll split this and make it a quarter. So you're thinning that out as you wrap. Yeah, I, oh, I mean, that just kind of happens no matter what I'm wrapping. Just keep it smooth, you know. All right, so this should start to give your head, you know, you've got a chin and the back of the head here, but we're gonna make another piece that, um, well, we're gonna make a lot of pieces. I don't go too crazy on detail with the gnomes. I mean, I wanna get the head shape right, but um, cause he does get so much beard and mustache and a hat. <laughs> um, so it's not quite as labor intensive as a face that doesn't get a beard. All right, I actually took some pretty good face notes here. Taco forehead and occipital. Okay, so I wanna make a taco that's gonna come all the way around and basically create, start to create a brow and also deepen this, um, you know, that bump, the occipital that we have on the back of our head. So I've got about an inch, two inch square of core. I'm stretching it out. So it's like two by two. And then I'm just gonna make a simple taco. And so the round part, before we do this, you're, you're, he's gonna get quite a, a chin and jaw here. So you really have to set the eyes lower than you think because you wanna leave a lot of forehead. It's really common making faces to lose the forehead. And I know there's gonna be more wool down here. So going with the um, idea that the eyes rest on the center line, I'm actually gonna put the eyes on the center line I got some kind of vegetable matter in here. I'm just gonna stab in, so I'm like, okay, I know where the eyes should be. So this is gonna go just above the eyes. <laughs> is that funny? Well, it looks like a little piggy right now. <laughs> and just wrap around the back, and overlap. Watching the face come together is fun. Yeah. And then all the fringe comes up on top of the head and starts to build up the top of the head a little bit too. Another common mistake with faces is you don't have any face next to the eyes. The eyes are like way out to the side. So there should be about an eye's width between the eyes and an eye's width to each side of the eye. So basically that means the face is five eyes wide. We should go get our reference chart. Um, okay, rectangle. Okay. So I wanna put a piece over the jaw and I've done this a few different ways. 
what we're going to do is we're going to make a rectangle on the round end of the Zuli tool. And I'm using a quarter of a piece of core wool. And we'll say we want it to be about four inches long. So I'm just going to wrap the round part of the Zuli tool. We're going to do this for the nose and the cheeks as well. It's the same shape. So I've got a soft pillow and I'm going to put it, basically I'm starting to make a chin. I'm just starting to bring, um, oh thank you. I'm starting to bring this forward. I'll move to the center. Okay. Not, uh, this go. forward. This part right here. So um, what, what basically is our teeth? So I'm just tacking the fringe down. And then I want to make a little fold to make that chin. So I want to come up at it from the bottom to keep this fold here. So that really increases that depth. Then I want to make two little triangles to make the jaw bones. So I'm going to take, if I just pull the core, I get about a two inch square, but I want to make them each a one inch square. So I'm taking half of a short length of core, and I want to make a 90 degree triangle. Not too flat. You know, leave some dimension here. Doesn't have to be super pointy either. So it's got a little width, width to it, a little thickness to it. And so this corner becomes the jaw and the fringe blends into the rest of the face. I like this core, but every once in a while you gotta pick some vegetable matter out of it. So even when I make animals, I'm I'm basically constructing a skeleton a skull or skeleton under details, firmness, shapes. Okay. Okay, so our eyes are still here. Plenty of forehead. Well, or so it seems right now. Okay, let's do nose and then cheeks, because I like to let the cheeks kind of blend into the bridge of the nose. So the nose is going to be um, same as we did this soft pillow. This I found works the best. I've done noses so many different ways and so there's definitely more than one way to put a nose on a gnome here. But um, if I make this soft pillow just by going around the Zuli tool with a half inch strip maybe three or four times Then I've got all of this clay in it and I can really sculpt it on here. Whereas before I was trying to I was trying to make all these shapes, but this is a situation where the needles doing the sculpting works pretty well. So what I'm thinking as I'm doing this is that I want a sharp bridge to the nose between right between the eyes. And then I want to create 
Oops, sorry, is my head in there? Bit. There you go. I'm gonna tuck this up under. <laughs> so their noses are really, gnome noses really um, stick out. Let me see if I can find a good picture. Um, see, like they really come out. It makes them look nice and gnomey. So that's what I'm trying to do here. And if I tuck in here and up there, it's gonna start to make the nostril shape to the nose. So it's here and then here. So where do you put that needle makes a big difference. Yeah, and this is really hard to do without putting I'm, my head in I'm there. I'm pretty super zoomed, so you can okay. lean a bit. All right, so I'm not. I'm gonna leave it there for now. It's definitely gonna get more shaping, but I want to get some cheeks on. They have a nice, smiley, full cheek right here. So that's gonna be two more soft pillows on the Zoli Toll. Maybe a little bit um, narrower. In the nose. Mm hmm. Just slightly less. And then what I like to do is take one tapered end to meet the nose. I don't like that end, I'll use this end. We kind of have this meat on our, on our cheeks that comes up and meets our nose. And then let it really be smiley and poofy. I'm gonna switch to a single needle so I can really shape this. And by smiley, I mean, I'm. if you're smiling, it pushes your cheek kind of up, up here. It's not hanging down here. Faces are fun. It's really sculpting. It's really a lot of sculpting. Okay. All right, now we need to make um, an upper lip and a lower lip. <laughs> he looks cute already. Yeah. <laughs> but this is what I mean, see? His forehead is already like disappearing. I really got to get his eyes set down in here. <laughs> so funny. So the upper lip and lower lip are like tiny double tacos. And when I say tiny, I mean teeny tiny. So stab across this about one third down, fold it down, stab that, and about a quarter of an inch worth, and then fold the fringe back up. So that just gives you a little bit more oomph than a taco um, in terms of structure, but you still have some fringe. So one's bigger than the other. I'm trying to decide which will be which. I think this will be the upper. You can sort of part the fringe 
to tuck tuck it up in there. Now I'm going to use a strong needle and um, and really sculpt this nose a bit. So you're going to work and sculpt and stab and I'm going to entertain everyone. Okay. I got nothing. Let me look and see. I don't even have the dogs barking for entertainment. of a needle are you using? I'm using a, um, a 38. Okay. So I just feel like I got the nose a little bit more the way that I want it. Um, to make ears, we can wrap um, the Zoli tool and you can either make pointy ears on the end, which is what this guy has, or you can make a round ear, and I'll show you both. It's about the same amount of wool that you used for, um, you know, the other, the chin and the cheeks. So a pointy ear would be around the straight part of the tool to get it going, and then you hit the facet and come back down and then around the straight part and then keep it nice and thin and hit the facet and then come back down. My piece got a little weird there. But then you just slide it off and stab it flat. And then the fringe, you know, comes onto the cheek. I think I'm gonna do um, round ears on this guy just to be a little different. And so what I'm going to do is wrap a similar shape that we have done for every other piece. One for each side. Slide them off. And then you're going to make an ear by stabbing into one side and, and giving it um, kind of a crescent curl. So as I look at it, I'm thinking this is the top of the ear. And this is the earlobe right here. So now the tricky thing is I've got to make one the other way. The 
this side's harder for me. I'll fix it as I stab it on. <laughs> so the ear goes, um, if you're looking at the profile, between the mouth and the eye and right above the jaw. Trying to see if gnomes actually have pointed ears or round ears according to the internet. Seems like elves really have more of the pointed ears. Right, right, that's probably true. I've been making my gnomes wrong. Also coming up are dwarves and halflings. Oh. Helps if you get them even, symmetrical. You know what stouts are? Stouts? Well, in addition to gnomes and halflings and elves, there's tall fellows and stouts. No. That's a whole thing. There's web forums about it. You can go crazy on the center of the, center of the ear because he's getting cute. He is cute. Let's see if we can keep that theme going here. Um, I like to make another little double taco to make a brow, and sometimes I even do a little lower lid. And I vary on how I do the eyes. Sometimes I just tuck some. Um, Blue in there, like I don't do an eyeball. It just it just depends on you know how he's coming out and what I think he needs. So these are similar to the way we made the upper and lower lip. Actually, when I teach this as a, taught this as a workshop, I had everybody make all the shapes first. So we had a pile of face shapes, oh. and then we Didn't put you them have on. cups? Yeah, we had plastic cups with gnome face parts in them. It's just sometimes easier to concentrate on making the shapes and then, you know, figure out how they're all going to come together. So this just gives us another, you know, place to make a wrinkle or some expression. Generally, if you tip the brows up towards the center, he's gonna look happier. If you tip them down, he'll look like he's worried or angry. Generally, gnomes should be happy. I think so. Now, in your supply pack is a couple of little colors. Um, there's some cheeky which is to make the cheeks pink and the tip of the nose. And there's some olive, which is really fun to um, exaggerate the wrinkles. And like, you know, you can like, uh, you know, make the nostrils more defined by adding a little bit of, almost like shading. Um, he's, got, he's got olive, you know, to help make some of these wrinkles. Um, I did. I think I did that after the beard and hair, because then you just really know what you need to concentrate your time on. But um, we can do. Um, we should get the cheeky on before we do the beard and hair. And so I, I actually break the fiber. I stack it and restack it, and I'm, um, I think I'm actually breaking the fiber <laughs> just because you want it super fuzzy and short. So see how short it's become? And then I'll take a little bit of this on each cheek. So I try to leave it real fringy so that when I stab it on, the fringe just blends. And 
did the rest of the face. I can finish a sentence once in a while. I can work and talk. You do. I do. A lot. <laughs>